So welcome back. Uh, this is video number eight. And in this video, we would like to focus on multi-resolution modeling. So first, let's recap. We have started with the standard travel demand model. And then we have redefined relevant part of the network, means we have added junction geometry and control. And then we have run a simulation-based assignment. That means we have dynamic results also on the demand side. And now we would like to transfer this information, in particular the, the time information, to PDV VISM in order to carry out some, for example, corridor studies or some detailed testing of option. And of course, for this purpose, we do not export the entire network but a smaller area. And now I would like to show you the relevant steps to um, get to VISM. So first we need to create a subnetwork and then we will reassign demand and then export to PDV VISM. So as mentioned, first we create a subnetwork in order to um, transfer also the time information, we need to change the percentage time series of trucks also to a matrix time series because that is needed to get the time information into the subnetwork. We did that before for car already. Now we convert here the percentage time series into a demand time series. The demand time series, the new one, is automatically allocated. And we can here see the new four matrices that are created. So as a next step, um, we generate the subnetwork. And for that purpose, I will first um, select the territory to set the territory active and the network objects in the territory. And then we calculate the subnetwork. We choose a name for the version file and we also um, take over the demand. All the other settings, um, I will leave them uh, with their default values and then I execute or generate the subnetwork. So when you create the subnetwork, you might end up with such a warning. Um, the reason for that is uh, we basically take all the routes from the assignment and therefore the entry times of the demand into the subnetwork is known and accordingly the demand will be allocated to one of the demand matrices that exist for the four time intervals. But of course, there is also demand that enters the subnetwork after nine o'clock. And for that uh, additional matrix is um, created and the demand is then assigned to that additional matrix. So now our subnetwork is created and we can open the subnetwork. So we can here reuse our uh, global layout. So we have the same view and lists uh, on the network as we had before. And first we have a look um, at our matrices. So as you can see here for trucks, there's now a profile demand because that profile uh, corresponds now to the entry times of the demand into the subnetwork. And then you see here the additional matrices, one for car and one for truck. Uh, that were created because there's also demand that enters the subnetwork after nine o'clock. 
then it's also good practice um, to check the zone connection. Um, sometimes zones are connected to controlled nodes. And um, in that case, the control type does not have really a meaning. So I use the list of connectors and check for connectors um, where the zones are connected to a node with a control type. That is here the case. So we can um, check that. Um, here it might be the case that a link has been removed and therefore the control type here has no meaning anymore. So we can change it to unknown. As an alternative, you can also um, change the connector. So in our next step, we uh, define the procedure. So we can here just duplicate a group and move the group down to the bottom. And in that case, it won't be a hybrid SBA. It won't be a pure SBA. So in the assignment parameters, we remove the option to use hybrid. So now we can run the assignment. So again, um, that will take a while and we will get back when the assignment is finished. So now our, our assignment has finished and at this point I would encourage you to check again uh, convergence um, in case uh, you have gridlocks on the network, check uh, how you can resolve them and also um, general checks in the networks you can do at this point. I will skip that for now and concentrate on the last step, the export to Visim. So we um, choose here export and then uh, we need to um, choose the RNM file, the data with the network, the file with the routes and then settings to the transport systems we would like to export. In our case, we only export cars and truck. And we have to choose the corresponding vehicle category in Visim. So that is here AGV and car. Um, we need to select the driving behavior. In my case, it's, all, it's only urban. We do not have any information on public transport on this network. And we need to make sure that our simulation time interval corresponds to our assignment interval or at least um, to parts of it. So these are the par parameters that have to be set. Now we can export. Um, here we get a message uh, about link points that are located within the junction. That message means um, the junction layout or the display of the junction might be affected. So that is something uh, you can um, fix before you export. So for example, if we go now to the list of messages and to the junction editor, you can see that there are some junctions not properly displayed. Um, you can remove that in the junction editor by selecting the node and then you get here an option where you can remove these link intermediate points from the junction, uh, from the junction area or alternatively you can um, do a network check where you have um, the same option available that is called here node geometry for junction editor and a and m there is an additional explanation um, that this can be used to remove the uh, link intermediate points 
So we execute uh, the network check and then we can um, select the messages and do a fix to these junctions and this is now removed and now we can rerun the export to Visim. It might be useful to save the parameters before, so you do not have to repeat that. And now we run the export to Visim. Now the export is finished. You can now import the data into Visim. And the Visim network has then the dynamic information, so that means for the vehicle inputs and the vehicle routes, we use the information for each time interval rather than equally distributed demand over the entire assignment period as you would have that in case of a static assignment. So with this, we are at the end of video eight. In the next video, I will show you some tips and tricks related to the use of the simulation-based assignment.